We have darkness among us. A darkness where John chapter 1 tells us was of the world before the light entered into it. And John, St. John, gives us such hope in that text and in those texts that darkness was amongst the world and that a light had come into the world so that the world would not be so bleak, so dark, so damnably dark. John says that that light comes into the world and that that light was the light of mankind. And how beautiful that is. And then we get to John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 and 18. And then there we have the hope. We see the whole purpose of the life in that gospel. And in particularly in that chapter. For God so loved the world that He created, even though the world had despised Him and had broken apart from Him. Even besides that, God so loved the entire world that He would give His only begotten Son that whoever would believe would be saved. That He came not to condemn the world, but to save it. And that is all good, great, and wonderful. And you see football players, baseball players, basketball players, and all the others with the John 3.16, mostly the fans with the, with the uh, signs up, the John 3.16, so that they can get on air for a little bit and someone's going to go, oh, John 3.16, I better look that up. And then they see that and they read that text and they go, oh, God loves the world so that he sent his son. Okay. But why? Why send your son? We just talked about that in the parable. Why send your son into the world just to prove that God could do it? I mean, of course he could do it. So why send your son why send a light into such a dark place? Would you do that with your own children? I don't know that I could do that with Oliver. Send him to a dark place as innocent as he may be. And yet God the Father sent His Son into the darkness so that the darkness would be vanquished. And I love, I love the idea that there's no real such thing as night or darkness. There's only the absence of light. I love that idea. That there's no such thing as darkness. There's just the absence of light. That if light never existed, we wouldn't know anything else. But by the light that we know. And of course, C.S. Lewis is my favorite uh, quote of his, I, I can't say my favorite, but one of my favorite quotes of his. I believe in Christianity in the same way that I believe in the sun. Not because I can see the sun, but because of the sun, I can see everything else around it. And that's Christianity. Is that by the sun, the true sun, and I'm not making a pun here, I'm literally saying Christ, the Son of God, we can see all things around us, and sometimes those things are evil and wicked. Yesterday, when I preached, I preached harshly against our sins. I preached harshly against the judgment that has come into the world, and I preached harshly and vigorously that grace was given unto you. And that by the Lord's Supper you are forgiven of your sins. Well today, dear friends, 
I have a hard time preaching such rough law as I did yesterday. I don't have a problem preaching the law. In fact, we have to preach the law. Remember what I said yesterday that the people, there, that there are people that are hurting worse than you have ever imagined. There are people who are hurting around you deeper than you could ever think of. And there are people, other people who are around you who aren't hurting as deep or dealing with certain issues. But I promise you that after you break through the veneer, you scratch through the surface, you get into the facade, away from the facade, and you see true human nature, it would scare the hell out of all of us. To see who we truly are on the inside, to actually stand naked before God and know that we were naked like Adam and Eve, to where we were so ashamed that we would flee and run and say, and God say, well, why are you hiding? And they say, well, because we're naked. And he says, how do you know? I never told you what naked was. And so literally, they were scared. And they should have been. Because hell was awaiting. Death was awaiting. And so I ask you to look to your neighbors and to those who are suffering and realize that they too are in the world. I'm going to quote C.S. Lewis once again and say, I didn't come into Christianity to be happy. I knew that a bottle of port could do that. I came into Christianity because it's the truth. If you, do not, if you do not want to suffer, I do not recommend Christianity. We suffer. You can choose to carry one another's burdens and you could not choose to carry one another's burdens. One is a sin and the other is to be Christian. But I'm, what I'm saying is this. Once Adam fell, and once he blamed Eve, and there was enough blame to go around for everyone, once all that happened and darkness reigned upon the earth, all of a sudden, in Genesis chapter 3, we find God tell the serpent that the woman from her offspring would crush the head of the serpent. And that darkness would not reign forever. And so we jump back to St. John. And we see that that light comes into the world. And we go, yes, we're no longer in the darkness. And then we continue to, to, to read. And it says, and he sent his son into that world. And that world was full of darkness. And he was the light. And you know what? They extinguished it. We extinguished it. That's what we did to the light. We were in the darkness and then we could see everything and we were like, we don't want this. We can't do as much fun stuff in the light. We can't still kill and destroy in the light. We can't hurt our neighbors in the light. If we're standing in the light and the facade is gone, the masks are broken, and we stand naked and our neighbors look at our nakedness and they look at their own nakedness and they go we don't want this light and so it was extinguished a lee a lee lama sabachthani my god my god why have you forsaken me Christ quotes that. 
Christ quotes that. And I say He quotes that because the prophet in whom He quotes felt this way. And I say unto you, Dear sinners, dear sinners, why hast thou forsaken the light who has come into the world? But that's the thing. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son. Why? We go. We ask why. Why did He send His Son? And then we come to the darkness of Good Friday. When that darkness was extinguished, because it must be extinguished, because the only true wrath that could be occurred, that could be poured upon anyone, was the cup of wrath that was poured upon Jesus Christ and not upon us. And because that wrath was poured upon Christ on that cross, during that darkness and bitter hour, we would not taste that death. We would not drink from that cup. What does Christ say in the garden? Lord, if it be Thy will, let the cup pass from me. He was talking about the cup of wrath. I don't want this cup. Let it be passed from me. But not my will, but Thy will be done. And so anyone who would dare to keep their Lord off the, Christ, off the cross is of the devil. There can be no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So this darkness of this day was necessary to vanquish the darkness that we had created in the garden. Because the light's coming. Three days. The light's coming. Christ shall lay dormant. And the stone will be rolled away. And then from inside that stone, light will pierce into the tomb. And you know who will be there? Nobody. And that too, that's so empty of God, is full of hope, promise of the resurrection of us when we die. When our darkness in this time comes, we have that hope. When we peer into our tombs, the light shines forward that Christ has pierced the darkness. The darkness has pierced Christ, but the darkness could not overcome Christ. For the light who came into the darkness and whom the darkness overtook the light on Good Friday could not remain dark, but arose bright and shining and says this, I am the light of the world. Let us follow that light wherever it may be, even in the dark, darkest of darkness, even in the most harmful of harm, in the most hurtful of hurt, even in the most joyous of joy. Take that light with you and know this, that light, that same light was lit as a representary understanding. One day, for some of us, a long time ago, for others of us, not so long ago, it was lit from a Paschal candle right after you entered your own watery tomb and arose. And Christ says, because of this death, that child is mine. Live always in the light. And the darkness shall never again overcome you. This I promise. 
Amen.